Well, I'm live in Westminster, where those talks between the Prime Minister and Jeremy Corbyn on how to find common ground on Brexit are underway. Theresa May's decision to reach out to the Labour leader has angered Conservative Brexiteers, with one, a minister in the Welsh office, announcing his resignation. Let's talk more on this with uh, Bronwyn Maddox from the Institute for Government. Uh, I'm an O to be on the, a fly on the wall in these meetings, because both, well, particularly Theresa May, but uh, Jeremy Corbyn, both ha have issues. Both have risks in these tools. There are big risks for both of them. For, the, uh, for Theresa May, they're pretty obvious. It's that she has to embrace something like a customs union, which has been at the core of the Labour proposal. And we know from that very, very stormy cabinet meeting uh, yesterday that, uh, that uh, her, a lot of her cabinet and her MPs really don't want that. So she'd have to move a long way that way. Um, she also has the risk that Jeremy Corbyn might ask for things that, in fact, the EU would never deliver. Yet he's always been rather vague about what kind of relationship Labour would like to see with a single market, uh, accused of cherry-picking himself on that. And so she can't sign on to that. But for his part, he doesn't want to, be, uh, to, to own the outcome of Brexit in any, in any way. But and he, he could be justified in saying, well, I've been here for two years, and he you are wanting me to talk to me in the last two minutes <coughs> of, of, this, of this entire process. Um, he has indeed, <coughs> excuse me, he has indeed said exactly that. And, uh, <coughs> sorry, I've got a touch of the... Don't worry, it's, it's, do you know there are trees around here that do that um, to your throat? It's, it's, it's a common that. complaint. Yeah. He has said exactly that. Why has it taken you so long to, um, to come to me and uh, ask for this kind of compromise? Surely you should have reached across the aisle at the point when you lost your majority. And whilst this is going on, I mean, Parliament's not sitting around doing nothing. There are plans there, further talk of indicative votes. I mean, what, what, what might we see happening emerging in the next 48 hours? Yeah. Well, Parliament is trying quite a lot itself. They're having uh, some emergency debates today over what is called a business motion to pave the way for what might be a micro bit of legislation which they've called the EU Withdrawal Number 5 Bill. And this is an attempt to shut off no deal. It's an attempt to ask Theresa May uh, to force her to ask the EU for an extension. But even if this moved at top speed through the Commons and then the Lords, the earliest it could really force her to do that is early next week. And yet she might not know what it is and what plan she's going to be putting into the EU. But the EU has said that they would like her to put whatever kind of plan she wants for an extension to them by Monday. So the timing on this is really working against all the players in this. Could it work that uh, this is sorted out by, by Friday? It could just about work that the, uh, the, that the Commons and the Lords have managed to get um, uh, their micro-bill through, so telling her to ask for an extension. She could uh, decide on the back of this meeting with Jeremy Corbyn what kind of... Um, she might try and bring her own vote back again, her own bill back again, and say, look, uh, to MPs, look, you vote on this, her own kind of indicative vote. She could try to get this through by Friday and so preempt the MPs having their own indicative votes debate again on Monday. Um, we know that she's racing to that kind of timetable. But again, everything, the deadlines are clustering around Monday and Tuesday next week, and people are trying to beat those. So now, yes, yes, it is just possible to answer your question that she could get that through. Now, I've got water here if you need... Actually, I've recovered. Thank you You've very recovered. Much. That's I've fine. I'm running here people to meet, meet your what I was doing, but I was checking. Thank you, Thank well, you very now, much. Well, you. you mentioned deadlines, and of course, the EU has a deadline of its own, and that there's, pr there's pressure coming from Brussels. Yes, well, I mean, as, as, the, as it stands, we're due to crash out without a deal on April the 12th. Uh, the EU has an emergency summit on this in the middle of next week, and they've said to Theresa May, look, you've, um, you've got to um, tell us what you want and a plan for any kind of extension by early next week. And what they really don't want is the UK to be staying in um, as a member beyond May the 22nd, because they've got their elections on May the 23rd, and they can't have a member without members, in, without, without MEPs sitting in the European Parliament at that point. Now, looking at the politics of this, we've already heard how very, very angry Tory Brexiteers are mm. uh, that this meeting is happening at all. And obviously mm. they're particularly angry, given that Jeremy Corbyn has said often a customs union is, is something he's quite keen on. And then there's the issue of another referendum. Uh, uh, the, the timing of this means that there's got to be an answer to something. 
Yes, I mean, the, the, the Brexiteers, as you said, among the Conservatives, are absolutely furious at what the Prime Minister has done because, you know, for so long she has been tacking their way and trying to accommodate what they want. And she has pivoted, really, this week and said, OK, I'm finally going to reach across the aisle. I'm going to try to, uh, you know, uh, do a deal with the people who want a much softer Brexit, something like the customs union that Labour has been saying. But Jeremy Corbyn, while he's pushing that one, um, he, he can offend a lot of his own party who've been pushing very hard for a second referendum and saying, look, you committed to this in a way at the party conference back in the autumn. You said if we can't get a general election, then you're going to back a second referendum. Why haven't you done that? And that really has a big, loud constituency in the Labour Party, and they're going to be very angry if he goes this way and does a deal with her. And very briefly, I mean, yesterday the, the talk was of Yvette Cooper's push to, to make sure there was a no deal Brexit. I mean, that's still bubbling away as well. Yes, that, yes, that is. And this uh, mainly what MPs are concentrating on today, as we've been discussing, mm. is trying to produce a, 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 this, this micro piece of legislation that would force the prime minister, prime minister to shut off by ten o'clock tonight. They reckon. Uh, yes, the first bit of that, but it would still then have to go to the Lords yeah. and so on, so it's not a completely done deal. And, of course, as some of the critics of this bit of legislation are saying, it doesn't have any dates attached. It doesn't tell the Prime Minister exactly what kind of uh, extension to ask for, but it does try to put another roadblock in the way of no deal. Bronwyn, always good to see you, and thank you very thank much. You. For, you've handled that brilliantly. <laughs> it's difficult, Bronwyn Maddox. Thank you very much.